Hi, Arigiboy, Arigiboy.com, and today I want to share you a technique or situation. Uh, I've been publishing several pictures I've made of this kind of uh, landscape. I'm here in Tenerife in the Canary Islands, and many people ask me how I get this uh, light, point of lights or darker part, all this. Uh, I don't actually do it myself, this is actually the clouds, but I want to show you the result, the effect, how I measure light, everything, okay, to show you the result. Okay, so again, I'm going to share that with you. So let's start. We always say that midday is not the right time to make pictures. Well, depends what you want to do. To do that kind of picture, this is a really good time because uh, the shadow that is cast by the, the sun on the on the okay, the shadow is made by the sun with the clouds. Okay, I don't know who, who, who casts uh, what, but well, the shadow that is cast there is actually uh, well defined. I like it. Okay, so midday is the right time. And also because the lower part of the clouds is really a lot darker, it looks a lot more dramatic. Okay, second, you're going to need a good tripod. Why? Uh, actually, there's enough light to use without tripod, but there is a reason. If you want to get light in the sky, and also in the darkest part, maybe your camera cannot cope with such a dynamic range, okay? So you're likely to need to make two or three pictures and then stack them together in post-production. So you have, uh, you don't over overexpose the, the, the clouds and you still have some uh, detail in the shadows, okay? That's on HDR, basically. HDR, uh, I don't speak about the fancy colors, that is tone mapping, I speak about the proper HDR. But still, I prefer not to do that because uh, if it's windy, the plants may move. So when you're going to stack, maybe it's a problem if you don't notice something is moved or the clouds is windy, so the clouds are moving fast. So between picture, maybe it will have moved a bit. So it's feasible, but I prefer to get one shot, okay? But in case you would need to make several shots, you have the tripod. Sometimes it's really hard to realize how much difference there is in highlights and shadows. So here I've got my uh, light meter, Seconic. And I'm going to uh, measure for you for one shot as if you didn't have any uh, graded filter. Okay, so I'm going to point at the lightest part of the cloud. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, this way. Okay, this tells me. Yeah. At 200 ISO, which is my OM system, it tells me at F8, one thousandth of, of, a, of a second. Okay, now let's check the the light area in the herbs there okay yeah it depends about 1 250th of a second when i recorded in french just right now it was different or in spanish i can't remember okay now let's check the darkest part there there's a dark part here 1 25th so if you calculate 125th, 250th is one stop, uh, 500th is two stops, uh, 1000 is three stop, and I get in the lightest part that one two thousandths, okay, and one thousandth there, okay. So I've got three to four stop difference, okay. So uh, from three stops, that'd be hard to recover, okay. Highlights, so I'm going to protect my highlights, okay. I know that I can recover one stop with no problem in post-production. So if it says that the lightest part is giving me, well now, one two thousandths of a second, I could sh shoot at one thousandths and get back the highlights and still be about three stop away from the darkest part, okay? So that should make it, okay? So I can recover after the shadows. But if you don't have any graded filter and you don't want several make, make several pictures, make sure you protect the highlights okay so i'm going to make the picture right now uh well no it's all dark right now i'm going to wait for the cloud to go away uh the picture i'm going to show you is not necessarily the one i've just made because i record in three languages okay so uh i wait to, to have a bit of movement okay so what's important to protect the highlights okay the picture i'm making right now see some light is coming in okay i made the picture right now okay i've got the highlight warning in the lowest uh, cloud there, but don't think it's overexposed. Okay, I think it's, uh, it can be fixed in post production. Okay, so you make several pictures this way, and this uh, what I'm showing you right now is not the proper way of doing because uh, you should measure for every area, everything fine, all this. Maybe you have to use a graded filter for the sky. But this video is for someone who doesn't have that much gear, maybe doesn't have a camera with a lot of dynamic range. So this helps to see what you could do with a standard gear. Okay. 
So uh, then look at this. This is beautiful, this, okay? Okay. So this is really hard to um, explain at the same time because I record in three languages and the, the wind moves the clouds really fast, okay? But one point that is, uh, I think it's important. We always said that when we have the hyperfocal, then everything will be in, fo in focus. Well, that's true, that's not tr it's not true. If you look at this size, yeah, probably everything will look uh, in focus. But when you make it uh, really large, like uh, the size of a building, uh, then you will see that, no, there is a depth of field, even if you're on F16 or F8 or whatever, okay? So it's important to choose where you're going to focus. Uh, always do it uh, in the light, where there's a point of light. Right now there's nothing because the clouds are all over, okay? But do it where there is a point of light, because this way, uh, when you uh, the person watching the, the picture will have the eye attracted to this area, uh, they will see it's really sharp. This will be the sharpest part. And even if you uh, then enlarge a the picture, that will stay the, 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 the most in focus part. Okay, so when you're going to focus, right now there's no point of light anymore, you do that. Okay, so you see why it is so, so, so important to uh, know exactly your camera so you know exactly how far you can go. Uh, and then get the highlights back or the shadows back. It's really important. Actually, right now, the video you see is recorded on an iPhone. It does by itself HDR, so it looks always a lot better exposed than if I uh, use my camera, okay? But you need to know that. So when you make the picture, you will not make the right picture uh, to be finished. You will make the picture that is ready to be uh, developed in RAW, okay? To give the right result okay so it's really hard, really important you know your camera to know how, how far you can go both way L uh, shadows and highlights maybe you don't work in raw file you work just in jpeg but you have to work in raw file with this why because you need to be able to get your highlights back and your shadows back so it's important that you do it this way okay uh, the video you see is recorded on an iphone so it works it does hdr by itself so actually, uh, you don't see the problems. It, it's actually uh, balanced properly, uh, all, the, all, all the highlights and, and shadows, all this. But your camera, if you put it in HDR, will also do it, but not as good as if you uh, do a, a, raw, a good raw development. So important, work in raw format, okay? If your camera lets you have a highlight and shadow warning, activate it, because it will tell you exactly how your uh, picture is going, okay? I actually made a video for uh, OM system to know uh, how to configure it, how to set up the, the highlights and the warnings, okay? So it's important that even, so you need to know your camera to test because for me, for example, uh, the highlights are in orange, okay? If I get orange uh, that appears, I know it's overexposed, but if I can get like a third or two third and that's still fine, I can still uh, get it back in post-production. So you need to make some testing to know when the warning are appearing, how far can you go and still um, fix it in post-production, okay? So in this case, I want to, uh, I will have, uh, let the warning appear, uh, one third or two third, okay? Because I know that I can get it back, so I get more details in the shadows, okay? And by the way, if you want to see as your camera is saying, your sensor is saying, you just blink like this, or you get your, your eyes like this, okay? You look at it and you really see clearly the shadows and the highlights and this is the way your camera is seeing. If the shadows are still, you still see some details, no problem, with one shot that's fine. In case you would lose all the details and the shadows, th then you are going to need to expose for the shadow or make two pictures or stack or do uh, bracketing or whatever, okay? But still, it gives you an idea this way of how it will look at the end, okay? The big problem with uh, composing your picture is that you want two things, the landscape and the stain of light, if I can call that, the point of light, okay? So sometimes they're not at the right place, so it's important that you get your uh, tripod, uh, you organize it, okay? You can move, search for the point of light, or uh, actually what you have is uh, the framing you want and the composition you want, but you don't have the light you want. So you have to wait, try to see uh, how the clouds are moving, they move fast here and see when they will reach the area you want. Maybe they will never, uh, maybe they will never do, okay? But, but still, uh, it's really, uh, really great to do. It's like chasing uh, the clouds and the shadows, okay? So that, that, that's really nice. But uh, still, it's important that you are ready for uh, concentrated and when you see the light exactly where you want, then you go for it, okay? So you probably say, 
Eric, you said that uh, you were doing just an easy system uh, for people who don't have gear, but what do you do when you actually work properly? Well, if I work properly, you realize that light is always the same. I mean, the high lights in the sky, I mean, are the same for about an hour, okay, or 15 minutes. The high lights in the sky, in the, in the sky is the same during this time. So I will measure each area. The highlights in the, the clouds, the darker part of the cloud, uh, the lighter spot of the, of the, of the grass, the darkest part, uh, the rocks, all this. And then I see how much dynamic range I've got on my scene, okay? Does my camera allow to capture all this? Yes or no? If it does, no problem. I estimate the exposure to get everything more, more or less in its place. And my idea is not to get a picture ready out of the camera. Many people say this is it should be like this. No, the way I work is the way Ansel Adams does. I get the picture ready to be developed, the raw file to be developed, not the picture ready to be shown or seen. Okay. So for me, it's important that I get everything in place. So uh, I've got shadow that I can uh, get back, and I've got highlights that that not uh, th th there's not a hole. There is actually texture. Okay. So this is what's important. If I see that my camera cannot uh, work, uh, do it, okay? Then I've got no other solution uh, to uh, output a graded filter maybe for the sky, for the sky. but uh, as you see, it's not uh, flat, it's going to be hard to, 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 to do it properly. Or make two or three pictures and then uh, stack them. I do some uh, exposure bracketing. If you do exposure bracket, bracketing, always play with the uh, speed, not the shutter speed, not with the uh, aperture, because otherwise it will change uh, the depth of field, okay? so. So I would do it this way, if it doesn't fit. If it fits, one picture, that's it. Or I would maybe reframe an area that gives me less problem, I don't get any sky, it all depends. But in, if I work on my own, I make a proper measure of every area and see what fits or not. Maybe you could get just extreme, okay? But still, I think it's better to make several measures to have a better idea of the situation, okay? The idea is not to get the picture ready to be seen, but to have it ready to be developed from the raw file, okay? So last advice and I'll let you go and make pictures, okay? So uh, don't put your uh, ISO too high because uh, you reduce the dynamic range and here we need the maximum dynamic range, so don't reduce it, okay? Second, uh, when you're going to develop the raw file, you need to get everything in place. So the highlights that will be probably at the limit, so you need to uh, get them back. So highlight recovery is important to, to get it back, okay? The shadows, don't recover too much shadow, otherwise it gets a bit unreal. And the idea is actually to get something contrasty, okay? And then the color balance, the white balance, well, actually, it's not a product. You don't have any uh, contract to show exactly the color. So put a bit what you want. If you want it warmer, cooler, you decide. This is your interpretation of the landscape, okay? So, but don't forget, the picture you've just made is a picture thought to be developed uh, to, in post-production and get things in place, color in place, and everything you want, okay? It's not to get it ready out of the, of the camera, okay? So it was a bit hard to explain because uh, light is changing very fast. If you hear some noise because there are some tourists around, okay? When they see a car that is stopped, they all stop at the same place. So I stopped, so they all stop, okay? And, uh, and it's true, there's a nice landscape. It's logical, they watch also. So uh, I hope you like this video. It was hard to explain and uh, because uh, light is changing so fast between uh, language and recording. But I, I hope you get the idea of the way of working and also that it's really important that this kind of picture, you prepare it for post-production. You don't think it's finished out of the camera, although it can happen, okay? But still, uh, the idea is to prepare it, to be prepared, uh, to be ready for uh, post-production, okay? So I hope you like the video. If you feel it may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. The small button on here is a small bell. If you click on the bell, get notified when I upload a new video. My website, erichibo.com. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below. I also leave you links of my uh, gear on Amazon, links of everything I reviewed by KF Concepts and Mark and Flashes by Westcott, and also a link to my PayPal account in case you wanted to make a donation. Thank you very much. Please take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye.